Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Resilient Cafe. I'm Brianna, and today I am super excited to invite Jill Todd to the show. And when I think about why, I think because everyone loves animals. <laughs> Everyone loves animals. And Jill is a doctor of veterinary medicine. She is a certified veterinary um, acupuncturist and also a certified veterinary chiropractor. Did I say that right? Um, the word is chiropractitioner because the school I went to, that's how they um, like to be referred to. But I do a little bit of everything as far as chiropractics. Um, there's you know different schools of thought for everything and, and everyone has their own certification and stuff. So um, I see. Okay. So to be legit, that's the way you're supposed to say it, but it doesn't matter. It's all, it's all the same thing. I think chiropractics is a universal term. Got it. Got it. So, so basically holistic health for animals. And, you know, I, I don't think I really knew until meeting you, Jill, that there was holistic health options for animals. So I think that's so great. And I think, um, that's why I was excited to have you on the show to build some awareness um, about that um, in case people have some animals, you know, that they need, you know, that kind of assistance with, you know. So, um, so one of the things that uh, intrigued me that I think our listeners will want to know is how you got into this kind of practice. Can you tell us a little bit about your background? Absolutely. It's actually a pretty fun story. Um, and I, I just did this big holistic summit with um, a bunch of other holistic veterinarians. And it's just interesting, like everyone has their story, either um, they themselves had an issue that wasn't being resolved by traditional Western medicine, or maybe someone in their family or one of their animals. And it just makes you kind of do a deep dive to try and find what works and what works for you. Um, I had a Rhodesian Ridgeback, um, which was my soul and heart dog. She went through vet school with me. She went through my divorce with me. She went through several moves with me. I mean, she was my love, my child, right? And she was getting older and she was having back issues and she was having problems walking. And I went to two different surgeons. One surgeon was like, yeah, you know, it's just kind of what happens, you know, you can support it, blah, blah, blah. And then I went to another surgeon. He was like, oh, let's do an MRI. We did an MRI. We ended up doing surgery. She had two discs that um, she had surgery on and the surgery didn't work. As a matter of fact, she actually got worse after the surgery. And I brought her home and I was like, you know, not ready to give up. I found an acupuncturist. I was, I was living in Texas at the time. Um, found an acupuncturist in Austin. I went up there and she showed me the points. She drew on a little map of um, a picture of Tally Ho and showed me where the points were. She gave me a box of needles. Um, she gave me some references for some books to purchase, where I could purchase just the needles. And she said, okay, now don't come back and don't send anyone else to see me because I can't do acupuncture. I just bought this practice. I'm doing surgery now. Um, she was an oncologist and she did oncology surgery, but she also was certified in like everything, Chinese medicine, um, acupuncture, acupressure, um, chiropractics, Tunai. I mean, she had more things on her wall than I had walls, right? I mean, it's just amazing. And I was like, you're not going to help me. And she's like, I just, I can't, you know, I'm building this practice and it's surgery. And, you know, I just can't do acupuncture at this time. But if you learn acupuncture and go to school, I will send you all my people. And I was like, How okay. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. So I went home and I did those points three times a week for two weeks. And then I did it twice a week for two weeks. Um, and then I went to once a week and it was amazing. Tally Ho was walking in two weeks. She was running in four weeks. She was going up and down the steps again. I mean, I had my dog back, right? I mean, I had my dog back and I was like, okay, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just following the little points on the map. I have no clue, but this freaking works and I need to figure it out. So I um, was led to go back to school and learn acupuncture. I went back to CSU. Um, it was probably the hardest thing I did harder than vet school because I was still um, maintaining my practice. I was a sole practitioner that I owned this practice. I had to leave for a week at a time and have someone come in there and then come home and take care of my practice and then study and learn Chinese medicine. And it was like, 
seriously, like learning Chinese, right? I mean, you're not just learning, um, you know, where to put points, you're learning a whole different way of looking at medicine and the body and the world, because really the um, Chinese medicine is like the gardener and you have to nurture the ground and you have to um, go with the seasons and take care of everything. Mm -hmm. Whereas mm -hmm. they look at Western medicine more as like the mechanic. It's like something breaks down, you kind of fix that little point. Whereas, you know, Chinese medicine, you're, you're fixing the whole thing and it's much more holistic. So it's looking at um, the world, your animals and yourself in a whole different viewpoint. Yeah, that's amazing. I know I recently started a new Qigong practice that also like brings into the like the seasons and like that Chinese medicine aspect. I'm super enjoying it. It's like really makes sense when you get into it, you know, um, so. And it's so fun. I mean, it really yeah. is, but it does. It makes sense when you look at it, you know, what types of um, issues build up in the winter because it's cold, you know, they, they call it like a, a bee or a stiffening, your back gets stiff, your neck gets stiff, you know, because you're not out and you're not moving and it's cold, the weather. Um, and so the seasonality is super important and it teaches you how to eat for your body as well. For humans and animals, you know, there are certain seasons which you should eat certain fruits and vegetables and stews in the winter and things like that. So it's just, it's pretty fun. Wow, that's totally pretty... changed my life. Yeah, I'm just diving into that now. So, you know, it's really interesting to hear um, all of that. And, you know, so when you're, I've seen you online, I've seen you on Facebook, and I've actually watched you do a live session, you know, which I think is so cool um, because it's like really breaks down the mystery of, of what your sessions are all about. Um, so, why don't you just talk a little bit? Can you tell us a little bit, what are some of the issues that you commonly see in animals? Like some of the top, you know, I don't know, the top few issues that people come to you for, um, and then talk about what a session looks like. So for me, um, I started working out of my home the beginning of the pandemic. Um, and so I have animals come to me at my house. Um, the majority of the cases I see are usually either orthopedic or neurologic, mm -hmm. um, mostly older animals that just ain't quite right doc, you know, um, not moving good, or they've had an injury or um, regular Western medicine has failed them. They can't take the medicines or people want to get them off these medications. I also see a lot of issues with like urinary incontinence, um, seizures, um, lots and lots of backs and necks are kind of my specialty, mm -hmm. but um, anything that has to do with um, any kind of injury as well. So um, I usually do um, a variety of things and I always tell people that the animals tell me what they want. And, and what they need. And I'm actually, you know, learning animal communication right now. So learning to actually talk to animals and um, find out what they want and what, and what they need. Um, the majority of my animals get acupuncture or acupressure or both um, VOM, which is veterinary orthopedic manipulation, where I use um, a little tool. To a little a little clicker if you've ever been to the chiropractor oh, yeah um so chiropractic tool to help adjust their spine and of gentle um, I have approach yeah Mm -hmm. The little clicker. Um, I have several different cold lasers. So once I put the acupuncture needles in them, I'll put the cold lasers on them so that they're kind of incubating with, with, with lasers. I've got um, usually some type of aromatherapy going, whether it's um, with my infuser or sometimes I'll put directly, if I have an animal that comes in that's a little anxious, I'll put it directly in their earlobes or on the bottom of their feet, just help them kind of calm down. Um, usually most of the time, once they come in here, um, it's it's just such a relaxing, um, fun, homey atmosphere. It doesn't smell like the veterinarians. You know, I have a lot of animals that come that have that white coat syndrome where they're afraid of going to the vet and they come in here and they're like, oh, it's a house. You know, it, it's not like a vet clinic. And because it just smells so homey um, and we've got these great, you know, uh, essential oils going. I mean, most of the time they just lay down and like, tell me what they want. You know, it's, it's pretty fun. Like I had a little two-year-old dog that came in, had an ACL injury or a, a stifle or knee injury. And I'm seeing a lot of those because people don't want to go and have like a $10,000 surgery on their knee. I mean, it's so expensive. And the surgery is, um, in my opinion, quite barbaric. I mean, they put um, implants in there. Um, it's, uh, it, it, 
a lot of dogs do really well from it, but a lot of dogs reject the implants or they have arthritis later, or like I said, it's super, super expensive. Um, so I had a two-year-old dog come in and she was just like all full of piss and vinegar and just jumping around. And she came in and she just laid down and fell asleep. Like before I even started, I mean, oh, it was just like, <laughs> it was just like, oh my God, but she knew, I mean, she came in and she knew, and she showed me what she needed. And, you know, I did her first session and I went out and I talked to her mom and her mom was just so thankful. She said, you know, whenever I was talking to my other vet and they were talking about the surgery, it just didn't feel right in my heart. And she said, I came here and I know this feels right in my heart that I'm doing what my dog needs and what will, you know, help our family um, deal with this and not having to go through surgery and, and the pain of surgery and, and getting an implant put in there. It's like a spa for your pet. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? They love it. I, I have dogs try and break the door down to come in. It's so funny. <laughs> it's so different than taking to like the regular vet, right? Dogs and animals get super anxious and they don't want to go, you know, but it sounds like they're like wanting to, they know actually really safe place and going to be healing and relaxing for them. Absolutely. They love their time here. Mm -hmm. That's so nice. And then, you know, um, you were talking about um, uh, animal communication. And I know you have a website, um, Jill and Joan, right? Um, and, and, you know, people can look up there, but you have also a, a partner who does um, animal communication. So I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about that partnership, about that website. Yeah, no, I would love to. So jillandjoan.com is our, our website. Joan Renquette is a world known um, animal communicator. She teaches animal communication and has uh, communication with all life, which I'm a faculty member of there. Mm -hmm. um, that's where I teach my acupressure courses. Uh, right now we're in the middle of doing a five elements acupressure course, and then we're going to be starting a yin and yang acupressure course in April, I believe. Um, and we're actually starting our big 21 days of fitness on March 20th, which is this Sunday. And mm -hmm. I hope people will um, join. It's a free event. Um, basically what you do is sign up for it and every day you will get a new email and the email will discuss something about animals the first one will be about setting your intentions for the 21 days mm -hmm. um you know what you want to do with your 21 days of fitness is it something that you're just kind of um, first time out for the winter and just want to kind of get moving and going. Um, I've had a couple of injuries between myself and my dogs. So we're kind of in the process of rehabbing. Um, we have a lot of people who have cats that don't go outside. So it's getting them inspired indoors to move around, to get fit. Um, people who have horses, if they're rehabbing them or if they're just taking them out for a trail ride or if they're just leading them around, just getting you and your animals to move together to make it really fun. So it's a big um, community event. And we've mm -hmm got some great prizes. Um, we work with Facebook. On, we're going to have a Facebook live at 10 o'clock on Sunday um, mm. to just let everyone know. So Joan and I will be getting together for that Facebook live virtually um, mm. and just try and get everyone out there to start moving and setting their intentions, what they'd like to do. So we've had last year, we had a great turnout. We had people from Colorado who were um, out there doing cross country skiing with their dogs. Oh, yeah. um, we had people um, with their horses, just kind of leading them around over Cavalettis and just doing groundwork to get them back in shape. Um, we had people just, you know, setting up little indoor sports for their, their dogs and cats um, for either rehabilitation or just to get them to move. So super mm -hmm. fun. And, and then if you take pictures and you post them on Facebook, we're giving out great prizes. Some of them are like our CBD or hemp chews. Others are like gift certificates to Chewy um, and also gift certificates for our live and our um, digital classes. Wow. Yes. So many good things going on. Um, you know, I'm so excited for people to find out about this. I just feel like I know so many people with animals, you know, um, that and, you know, people really into their animals. I feel like they're going to really like to hear about um, your 21 days of fitness and um, and everything. And I want to make sure people know you're located in Kirkland. Correct. I work out of my Kirkland office mm -hmm. um, and then Joan is in California. So we do a lot of virtual 
things and our classes are all virtual, they're on Zoom. Um, if you can't make the class or you have to leave, they're always recorded. So if for some reason, you know, you just can't make the class, the live class, you can always look at the recording. And there's usually two recordings because we have a morning class and a night class. So you can watch both classes and learn because each class is a little different and really fun. Yeah. And then, well, yeah, you were saying that you were doing like an acupressure and meridian class right now. Um, you know, that one's already in progress. What do you have coming up? The yin and yang class is starting April. Gosh, I'll have to look at my calendar and see. That one's starting in April. Um, actually, no, it's the very beginning of May. So the 5th and 6th of May is the yin and yang class, and that's five weeks. Mm -hmm. And that um, talks about the yin and yang, like Chinese medicine. And we learn a lot, a lot about the conception vessel, which is the front half of your body, and the governor vessel, which is the back half of your body, mm -hmm. and how those two parts, it's kind of like light and dark, how they come together, you know, and you don't have yin without the yang, which is what the really fun part is right yeah. and trying to get that balance and finding that harmonious balance which gets your body in balance you know just like what we do with qigong and yoga and tai chi all of these things go together as far as finding the balance for your body for physical ailments as well as emotional ailments and so many animals have a lot of emotional ailments and especially right now with the pandemic um, we've got a lot of uh, anxiety in our people and our animals as well, and especially separation anxiety as people are starting to go back to work. Oh, yeah. So a lot of these um, essentials that we learn in Chinese medicine help the animals and help the people with their emotions and the physicalness um, or the physical issues that you have in your body due to emotions, because we hold so much tension and emotions in our body that we don't even know. Totally. Yes. Um, yeah. Very similar to Qigong and, and, and what we're trying to do there, creating that balance in your body for, for all those different, um, you know, anxiety or anger, or like, um, or even just like, uh, balancing the elements. Right. Absolutely. Um, so, and then you, you also have, you're doing something with like CBD for pets or like hemp for pets to yeah, that sounded interesting. Yeah, the, the jillandjoan.com, and that's how we actually got together, um, at least for uh, a partnership, was for the CBD or hemp extract. And then we have animal pellets, which are made into little, they look like little alfalfa pellets. It's just pure hemp um, mm -hmm. that was made originally for horses. Um, we have it as sanctuary pellets so that um, animals in sanctuaries can get them. I use it a lot in my dogs and cats. As a matter of fact, I personally and my boyfriend and all of my dogs in my house take the animal pellets every day. Mm -hmm. um, hemp is really good as far as just helping your body find homeostasis like every cell in the human body has um an endocannabinoid receptor in it and when i found that out because i didn't find it out until after vet school and i went through so many years of biology and vet school and they never taught me that right yeah. um it's so important just to maintain physical health mm -hmm. um and especially when you're stressed out right when you have a lot of stresses um so yeah we've got cbd pellets we've also got um, chews for dogs that's made into a little treat. It also has some other herbal like chamomile and valerian in it. So it just really helps. I have a lot of dogs who have um, pretty bad noise phobia with uh, thunderstorms and fireworks. And I've had so many people come and they've told me that I've tried everyone else's CBD and we've tried yours and this is the best thing out there. So um, I like to use it for pain, for anxiety, um, but just really, I, I call it vitamin H instead of, you know, CBD, because to me, it's something that's just really good to keep your body in a good place. I see. Yeah. I've heard a lot about, I took, I did a little bit of CBD in my life. Um, at some point I bought some of, some of the oil and definitely you can feel some like level of calmness in your body from it. Um, I didn't, it was expensive for me at the time. I didn't keep going with it, but you know, I could definitely see how, um, how that would be beneficial. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what the thing I love about the animal pellets is because it's made for horses. You get like two pounds 
Um, and for people or smaller animals, you know, dogs and cats, it lasts forever. So it's so much cheaper than the oils. Plus they found that if you eat it as um, a food or a treat with a meal, um, it stays in your system better. Whereas the oil, you kind of get a little bit of an instantaneous gratification, but it doesn't last as long. Um, it doesn't digest the same way. So they've actually found that the edibles tend to be a little bit better as far as just kind of keeping it in your system. Like better assimilated into your system when you like eat it or drink it as something, right? Right. It just gets absorbed better. Mm -hmm. Better absorption. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. Um, and then, you know, is there is there anything I missed? You have so much going on, right? Uh, that I just want to like open it up to like, you know, is there anything I missed that you kind of want to share with people um, about what you're offering? Well, um, you know, the reason I became a veterinarian was because of my love for animals. You know, I just, I resonated with animals more than I resonated with people. When I was a little girl, um, they would ask me, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I would say, I want to be a vegetarian. And they're like, you want to be a vegetarian? I'm like, I love animals. They're like, you mean a veterinarian? Yeah, a veterinarian, right? You know? <laughs> Um, because I just, I mean, I loved animals. I played with my dog all the time. I mm -hmm. found, you know, little birds that fell out of nests and little turtles that needed help. And, and I was just always forever trying to help every animal that I could. Yeah. And, you know, I think there's so many people out there that, you know, I, I don't have two legged children. I have four legged children. <laughs> I think there's a lot of people out there that are the same, you know, they mm -hmm. have their, their four legged, their cat is their child, or especially in the pandemic, you know, there's been so many people that have adopted animals, right? Um, they brought them home from the shelter and they found, you know, that this is another, another kid or a playmate or a buddy. Um, our animals are people too now, right? I mean, they always have been to me, but a lot of people have just kind of changed their ways as far as, you know, when you're looking at their animals, you see all these pictures of um, people in, um, other parts of the world that are, you know, going through this war and all the issues that we're seeing and, and they're trying to evacuate and they're, they're taking their animals, you know, because these are yeah. their kids, right? You know, I don't know if family. Some of those, yeah, you can't leave them behind. Pictures on Facebook where people are carrying a, tw a 12 year old German shepherd that's probably 70, 80 pounds so they can get it, you know, across the border to a safe place. So, and it's I just amazing that. to me so how much that. love we have for our animals. And there's so many new things out there. And, you know, I, as a holistic veterinarian, um, very, you know, kind of a, against um, big farm and we have big farm in veterinary medicine, just like you have big farm in human medicine. And I'm that way with myself, I try and eat healthy, keep my body in, in a good place and not take medications. I mean, yeah. I don't want medications and a lot of people don't want medications for their animals either. So food is a medication, herbs are a medication that we can use. Um, that's a lot easier on the system and you don't have the side effects that you do with traditional Western med medicine. And I think so many people are finding that now um, that their animals don't do well on medication or they don't want them to be on medication because they know what the side effects are. Um, so it's just a different way to treat your animal and keep your animal in a better place um, by using holistic veterinary medicine or using body work. Um, I just think uh, body work is one of the best things we can do for our animals and our people too. Yeah, I know. Actually, my, my, uh, the cat that I'm living with right now, uh, she has, she's so funny. Um, I've had cats before, but she, she's like, uh, knows exactly what she wants. She'll let us know when she wants to go out. She'll let us know when she wants to come in. She wants to tell us when to eat, feed her. Like she's really, and she kind of chirps. <laughs> she chirps and makes all these little noises, but every evening I'll sit on the couch and within two seconds, she's on my lap, you know, ready for her spa treatment. I call it her spa treatment. So is she getting a good massage? She gets a little massage. Yeah. A little bit of energy work. Yeah. Nice. So and cats, cats respond to energy work so well. They have amazing, amazing energy. Yes, they do. I'm actually getting healing too from the cat. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they actually have statistics for the purr and the resonance and the vibration of a purr for a cat, uh -huh. how healing that is, especially for the bones, Yeah, because it's in the same resonance. So there's, I mean, studies that you can look up about how healing cats are for people. 
Yes. Oh, I totally believe that. Yeah. There's, you know, I'm sensitive, energy sensitive and everything like that. So yeah, she's like, you know, laying on me and I'm just like, I can feel that kind of like, there's like a, a it's good for your heart chakra. Absolutely. Know, as well as what you're saying about the bones and different things like that too. I have a hip injury and I, I think she's trying to help me heal my hip injury. <laughs> Absolutely. And she's obviously doing a good job. Yeah, she is so cute. I love, I, I love animals a lot. Um, so, um, so I just want to make sure too, everyone knows how to get in touch with you. Cause you have, you know, I've mentioned the one website, which is, uh, what is, can you remind the J squared healing.com. Okay. J squared healing. That's the main one. J that's squared. the main one. And you can write to me at Jill Todd at J square healing.com. Okay. Um, so if you'd like to, you know, communicate with me or set yourself up with a session, um, that's the way to get in touch with me there. Okay. Um, and then we've got Jill and Joan.com. So it's J I L L A N D J O A N.com. And that is, um, the site that we have our hemp, for sale and also um, the classes, which are the Jill and Joan acupressure and Meridian touch healing, mm -hmm. which are super fun. Um, and one of the things I love about these classes is so many people get a lot of self-care out of this because I teach the points so that people can learn them. I mean, we, we started this during the very beginning of the pandemic. Um, Joan's school was graduating people and to graduate, they have to have um, some classes, which are, um, just, you know, add on classes that are supposed to be body work and no one could get out to do any body work. They were supposed to go here or go there. And because everything was pandemic, we put together. Oh, you went a little bit frozen back. <laughs> I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden you just froze and, and then, yeah. And then I had to like, you know, boot us out and bring us back. So um <clears throat> trying to think of where you were you were talking I was about just talking about yeah. the point mm -hmm. and how i teach finding the points on yourself and mm -hmm. if you can find them on yourself then you can find them on your animal but i teach a lot of self-care points and tell people what you can use them on yourself like for headaches you know there's this bladder 10 that's right behind your neck that's great for headaches it's great for epilepsy so if you have an animal that has seizures it's also good for just neck and injuries in the um, head, neck, shoulders, etc. Mm -hmm. So I had someone send me because um, we have a, a Facebook group that we all talk about in our um, class that's just private for people who are in the class. And she said, I woke up in the middle of the night with this horrible headache and I remembered bladder 10. And she said, I just massaged it for a little bit. I fell right back to sleep. My headache went away and it was it was great. Right. I mean, so people are using a lot of these points on themselves for self-care and on their animals to help them. I see. So it's like a, it's like a bonus. Like you get to self-care for yourself and for the animals. Absolutely. That's, wow. What a great little course. And that's, that's coming up. Um, they, that's the yin and yang course. That's yep. The yin and yang class is in the beginning of May and that's going to be for five weeks. Mm -hmm. And then we've got classes um, in the fall as well. So um, we've almost always got some classes going on or you can buy digital classes if you don't want live classes as well. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, wonderful. So anyways, I hope a lot of people watch this and I hope that people are inspired um, to learn a little bit more about what you're doing, um, you know, to bring their pets to you if they need it. Um, and, you know, look up your website and, and different things like that. So um, yeah, thank you. This was super fun, Brianna. I appreciate it. I really appreciate your time today. So anyways, um, thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Time. Thank you. <laughs> and we'll have to go out and get some nettles again soon. Yeah, we have to do that. I know. I'm, I'm excited. I, you know, the gas prices. Gas oh. prices. I'm like, I'm Crazy. supposed to be coming down into the Seattle area um, quite a few times in April. So maybe we can get together then. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah, I would love that. Okay, see you later. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.